Let's create a ladybug simulation measuring the daylight sun hours for an urban massing model. This simulation will give us information around the number of hours of direct sunlight received by a massing volume in an urban context over a specified time period. To begin, I have a Grasshopper template file containing an urban massing model from the city of Melbourne in Australia, as well as a panel containing a link to an EPW weather file that contains weather information about the city. You can download this file from thedifferentdesign.com. Once you've got this template file open, just make sure that your Rhino units are set to millimetres because that'll affect how we do our weather simulations. If you jump into perspective and zoom out, you'll see this urban context model uh, being referenced into Rhino through the preview component. The first thing we want to do with Ladybug is we want to turn this weather URL file into a usable weather file. So I'm going to jump straight into it and go to the LB download weather component and drop that onto the canvas with Ladybug and plug that URL into the weather URL input. And what it'll do is it'll actually save that EPW file for us into a folder that Ladybug kind of specifies, which is quite helpful. So the next thing we want to do is actually turn this EPW file into like a usable location inside of Ladybug. So let's set, select this LB import location file and drop that in the canvas, input the EPW file, and then we'll get a nice location telling us about Melbourne, its latitude and longitude, and a few other things that are going to be useful for Ladybug. Now for us to do our direct sun hours calculation, we want to first set up a sun path diagram using Ladybug. So we can do this by coming up here to the LB sun path diagram, clicking on it once and dropping it onto the canvas. It's a pretty scary looking component, but if we click once on this bubble, we'll notice that um, the only thing that we need to just get it working is some location data. And we've got location data coming out of our import location component. So I'm gonna drag that location input into this location here, and straight away we get a nice sun path diagram appearing in our Rhino viewport. So you might have seen a diagram like this previously. Um, basically sun path diagrams typically just show where a sun is going to be positioned at any point of time during the year and we can kind of specify like a very specific time period using Ladybug. So if I went into the analyze data um, drop down menu and selected the LB calculate HOY it's going to calculate an hour of the year for us based on something we input. So what we could do is create some grasshopper panels that specify the month day and hour that we want to look at. So I'm going to look at month 12, which is December. And in Australia, in Melbourne, that is the middle of summer. And we might go for day 21. I think that's summer solstice. It's pretty close to the longest day of the year. And then for an hour, let's just go midday. And if we go and plug this HOY into the HOYS input in SunPath, we get a point that appears to show us where the sun would be at this particular you know, time period. So if I made that 9 a.m., suddenly we're lower in you know, the sky in the east. And if we made this you know, September, suddenly we're even lower and backwards in the sky again. Um, so then we can specify a very specific time period. We want to specify a actual longer period than that. So what we want to do is have an analysis, analysis period rather than a specific moment. So if we go to the Analyze Data tab again and select the Analysis Period component and drop that onto the canvas, we can actually specify a period within um, our Ladybug simulation rather than one specific day. So the period that I want to specify, it's going to be on the 12th, so the month the 12th. So I'm going to make the start month 12, and then the end month also 12. And I'm just going to do it on the day of the 21st, so the start day and end day also going to be the 21st. I'm not going to do a specific hour. We're just going to look at this specific day of summer solstice in Melbourne in Australia. And I'm going to plug this HOYS into HOYS sun path. And you'll see now we get a collection of points generated in our sun path diagram that specify kind of every hour that's occurring in this analysis. So now that we've set up this sun path diagram, we can get straight into analyzing some geometry using Ladybug. I'm going to go to the Analyze Geometry tab, and we're going to look at this direct sun hours component, which will give us our sun analysis um, and basically tell us the number of hours a specific you know, massing or geometry is exposed to daylight. The only thing we need from the sun path is the vectors. So we can take those vectors and plug them into our direct sun hours, um, just like that. And then we need a few other things. So if you click on your little bubble, it says you need some geometry to analyze. 
we need a grid size, and we need to specify that we're running the simulation. So let's go and just create a geometry container like this. And I might just draw a box on um, in Rhino just there, like that. That can be like a small mass that we're proposing in the middle of the city. And I'll go set one geometry with that, and then we can reference that geometry into here. So we could also reference some context in, um, and that context could come from, you know, this context up here. So from this geometry file, we could reference that guy into there. Then we also need to reference a grid size that it was asking for. Because we're working in millimeters, we want to have a pretty large grid size. So I'm going to go for a value of three meters, which is 3000 millimeters and plug that into there. And then for the offset distance, what that'll do is, um, Ladybug's going to basically spit out a geometry, a colored geometry showing our analysis. And we want to offset it from this initial geometry slightly so it's just easy for us to view. So I might do an offset distance of 20. And then once we're happy that with that, we can create a Boolean toggle and run the simulation. So I'll plug that into run, hit true. And then straight away, we get a da daylight analysis showing us the direct sun hours on this geometry that we've created in Rhino. So you can see at the top, it's getting upwards of 15 hours per day. And towards the bottom, it's getting no sunlight at all. And obviously, in the northern part of the sun, you're getting like a lot more red, whereas in the south, you're getting a lot more blue. And this is live. So if I go and move this over here, you'll see like this facade here being further away from these buildings has less blue on it now. And then if we move it back, much closer it gets a lot of blue on the analysis you could also create like a base um, in Rhino um, and reference both of these geometries in set multiple geometries and then we can get an analysis um, of the actual surroundings of the site we're working on as well which gives us a lot of control over uh, this kind of tool as a um, bit of a massing model tool that we can update live one thing I don't like about this tool right now is that we have to keep referencing our geometry back into this geometry component. And there's actually a much more convenient way for us to analyze the geometry in Rhino with a component called the geometry pipeline component. So I'm going to type in geometry pipeline, which is this one here. Um, and the geometry pipeline component actually references geometry from Rhino without us having to click any buttons inside of Grasshopper. So I might create a new layer and I'll call it massing. Um, I'm going to make my current layer and I'm just going to delete these two pieces of geometry here. I'm going to name our geometry pipeline layer input as massing as well. And what it will now do is basically take any geometry that we model on the massing um, layer and output it into Grasshopper Live without us having to do any references. So I'll create a panel so we can see. Um, and I'm going to just specify a type. So I'm going to make this a brep. So I'm going to do surfaces and poly surfaces that um, are going to be modeled on this massing layer. Now, if I just create a box and model that there, you'll see straight away it references that brep in. And if I create a copy of this box, it references that in too. So we could now go and model anything in Rhino and it will update live and if we change that geometry it will also um, update for us. So this geometry pipeline could actually be taking over what the geometry input for this analysis is. So now if I draw up the plane in Rhino like this I don't have to reference anything in to get this analysis and then if I start you know drawing up maybe a, um, a little bit of a tower mass um, I can get some direct feedback straight away and then I can start, you know, manipulating the actual form of this tower based on what I'm seeing here in my daylight analysis. So maybe I want less red on this facade and I can pull that face out like that. Um, and then I'm starting to kind of manipulate how much gain, how much solar gain we're getting on these geometries. Maybe I want, you know, to create like an adjacent tower that shadows off some of this top part here like that and this is all going to happen live because of that geometry pipeline component anything we model on the massing layer is coming through into that component live which is a really great workflow when using ladybug